Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn the difference between come and came. This is a question that a student had asked and it's a great question, so I'm happy to answer it. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforestenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. What's the difference between come and came? Well, there's a very simple answer to this question. First, we have to know that the verb is to come. That's the infinitive form of the verb. So then you take your infinitive form and you're going to do two things. You're going to conjugate it with the subject and you're going to conjugate it with the time reference as well. The conjugations of the verb to come are the base infinitive is come, the past simple is came, and the participle is come. So your three forms of the verb, come, came, come, come, came, come, irregular conjugation. Now we can use the base form in the present simple verb tense. The present simple, of course, we're talking about facts or routines. I could say, she always comes late. She always comes late. So notice, I take my verb come, but then I have to think about my subject, which is she. So I have to add an S to the verb come so it's conjugated correctly with my subject, she. She always comes late. Now if it was they as a subject, it would be come because I don't add an S. I only add an S for he, she, it subjects. They always come late. She always comes late. They always come late. Now I can take that same sentence, but I could talk about yesterday. If I talk about yesterday, now my time reference is in the past, so I have to conjugate the verb in the past, and in this case, I need the past simple. Your time reference will tell you what verb tense you need. Yesterday is an indicator of the past simple. In the past simple, there are no different conjugations. We only use the verb came with all subjects. So I can say, she came late yesterday. She always comes late, that's the present simple. She came late yesterday. They always come late, the present simple. They came late yesterday, the past simple. So now you know how to use come and came, but what about that third form of the verb? That's the past participle, which is also come. We use the past participle most commonly with the present perfect verb tense. The present perfect verb tense is have or has as your auxiliary verb, and then your past participle, which in this case is come. So I could say, she's come late three times this week. She's. Notice that S in my contraction is actually the verb has. She has come, she has she's, she's come late three times this week. Now I'm using the present perfect here because my time reference is unfinished. It starts in the past, but it's an unfinished time reference because this week is still in progress and it's possible for her to come late again. She's come to work late three times this week. Now in the present perfect verb tense, the past participle come doesn't change, but we do conjugate our verb has or have depending on the subject. So if my subject is they, I need the auxiliary verb have. They've, they have, they've come late three times this week. So that's how you would use come as the past participle. To summarize, we have our verb to come, and then we have the three forms of the verb, 
The first form, come. The second form, came. And the third form, come. You need to make sure you're conjugating your verb with your time reference and your subject as well. Come is a very common verb in English, so you should definitely feel confident using it in your speech. So to do that, you need to practice. So why don't you leave three examples, one with each form of the verb, present simple, past simple, and present perfect. And of course, you can try different subjects as well to make this very challenging and leave your examples in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And if you're a busy professional who's serious about taking your English and your career to the next level, then I want you to go to my website, j4senglish.com. There you'll find a free case study where you'll learn how to feel confident speaking English in public so you can impress your boss and your clients with your message in only 30 days. To get your free case study, simply click the button, enter your name and email, and you'll get instant access to the case study. And until next time, happy studying. Awesome job, this is a very common verb, so you need to feel confident using it. So make sure you leave your examples in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.